Good morning, Lotro, and I'm here for some more Lord of the Rings Online. So once again, that time to make our way back into Lotro. Hopefully you guys are excited. I know I am. When we last left off, we were getting ready to be assaulted by sheep. Like, <laughs> this is too many. Why are there so many here? My lifelong struggle continues, stinking developers. Anyway, um, where did we last left off? We were getting ready to continue on the main story and get close to finishing it, actually. Uh, we're over halfway through the final chapter of this story. Probably won't finish it today, but we will definitely be finishing it within the next two streams, so get into the good, good story moments, and I'm really excited to see where this thing goes. Uh, so far, Before the Shadow has had a few really good story moments. Um, definitely way better, in my opinion, than anything in uh, the whole Gondaman expansion. Gondaman? Oh my gosh. Gundabad. Goodness. If we had a Gondaman expansion, I don't know what I'd do. I don't think you could have a whole expansion on Gondaman. But hey, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past the Lotro developers. Uh, they made War of the Three Peaks after all. Anyway, um, in all seriousness though, I'm really excited about where this story's going. And even more excited about Harad. I know I keep bringing it up, but man, I've been waiting ever since Mordor fell for Harad. And really before then, but especially since Mordor fell, I feel like Lotra's kind of lost its direction. Minas Morgul was awesome, but it was kind of the exception, not the rule. I don't, can I make it up here? I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. Oh my gosh. We divulged in the children's stories. I don't think the bulge is the right word there, but we're going to keep it going. <laughs> this appears to be the location of which Narmir wrote. Well, they should have picked a better location. Holy crap. But you know, the fire is kind of nice. Okay, what am I supposed to do here? Loot the corpse. We have to find the exact location. There we go. Goodness. The writing is so evocative, you can almost hear the sound of battle. I don't know why my voice did that, but there we go. Cardolan and Ruda. <laughs> were enmeshed in bloody fighting for near all the years of their existence. But few battles had such a cost as the Battle of Dreadmount. Four hundred years after the hated Eldmasil slew his brother Tarondor, another king of Rudaur marched deep into the kingdom of Cardolan. King Malgun, it was who broke the gates of Karanost at the head of an army of hillfolk. Much of the royal family was slain on that day, but Malgan was unable to find King Arantidil. Sensing his strength was near to overreach, the king of Rudauer and his armies fled across the South Downs. Maddened by this grief, King Artendil pursued them, and at last the soldiers of Carlin caught up with the fleeing Rudorim at the hill among the barrows. It is said they fought so fiercely that blood ran down the sides of the hill in great rivulets, and bodies filled the gullies at its feet. And when the fighting was done, both Artadil and Malgan were dead each having dealt the death blow to each other. 
The hill is known today as Dead Mount. Red flowers bloom there ever after, and do so to this very day. I picked one of these flowers on an overcast afternoon, when the sky was gray and it seemed the rain must soon fail. But it never did. I enclosed the flower within my journal. It will be a reminder to me that there can be beauty even in sadness. A faded red blossom is tucked between two leaves of Nandil. Oh, a faded red blossom is tucked between two leaves of Nandil's journal, and it crinkles as you turn the page. So you're telling me all these flowers are just like the blood remains of battle? That's crazy. There we go, that's a decent one. Trying to get somewhat good thumbnails. Alright, here we go. After King Artandil fell at the Dead Mount, it was Armandir who rallied what remained of the host. It was Armandir, the Lord of Tyrn Gorthad, and Keeper of the Barrows, who rallied what remained of the Cardalandrim host. Crying the king's name as he charged, Amondir rode between the rode down the fleeing men of Rudaur. The son of Malgan was captured and later ransomed, and a costly peace between the two kingdoms was purchased. The crown of Cardalan was offered to Amondir then. But he refused. He would not name himself king, and instead he took the title of prince. He would rule from Dol Ernu, his own keep in Turn Gorthad. The, prim the primacy of Cardolan waned, and Elendil's line now only held true Arthodyne. Hold true in Arthodyne. Amondia rode in for rode to Fornost after to offer his fealty, and with the reunification of Arthodyne and Cardolan beneath Argabeb, Argaleb, the newly crowned king of Arnor, there was once again hope for the line of Elendil and the troubled kingdoms of the Dunedain. But it would not last. Yes, those who have seen the first episode of Middle-earth lore on my YouTube channel would know that King Argaleb means that it wouldn't last because he's the guy that lost all of Arnor. For there was now a power behind Rudaur's evil, and it walked in secret. You should bring the journal to the location it describes, the southeastern corner of Turn Gorthad. Let's go. Holy crap, it's way on the other side of the world. Oh my gosh, if I have another ghost, shoot me with arrows. Gonna lose my stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So that's crazy. Every red flower you see was a former side of battle potentially, or maybe it expanded after that, I'm not sure, but either way, it was a huge amount of fighting there. I really, really, really wish 
that Lotro or some game or movie or something would cover Arnor and its fall because that story is just so good I wish that there was a game or movie set there it is just it is the in my opinion it's a better story than the story of the Lord of the Rings if done properly And I've said this time and time again, Warner Brothers does not have any idea the movie rights that they were sitting on. Like, they could have made money and money again if they would have just been smart enough to do more than just the Lord of the Rings. They have rights to all these stories inside the Lord of the Rings books, and they're just sitting on them, not doing anything with them. How can I be of service? And now that Amazon's making money with Lord of the Rings, they're like, oh crap, we gotta rush and... I saw the news that like, oh man, we gotta make more stuff now. And it's like, you guys could have been doing that the whole time. The whole time. Um, I think we'll go up here. Andrath. There we go. And no, chat, I don't normally spin Mithra coins, but when you get them for free, <laughs> you might as well use them. We almost looted. There we go. We got enough room. So that quest is just a mission. I'm pretty sure we finished all side quests. Pretty confident. Man, there's more red... There's more flowers over here. Holy crap. Must have been some battle, jeez. So you could do a whole movie about Golfimble. Where you have the orcs coming out of the Misty Mountains. Past all these rangers. All the rangers failed. All the, the hobbits. But thank goodness Golfimble was there to rise up, man. That would be such a good story. And yet... Nobody's really covered it. Lotro alludes to it. Like, there's so much great stuff that people could do. They oh, just um, haven't been. hello there. Well, I need your help again. Nan Mabby says, That's right, he does. This layabout lied to you, didn't he? She nudges her grandson with her boot. He groans and nods vigorously. I, uh, forgot to give you one of the items I uh, borrowed from the tombs. I tried to return it. I really did. But, well, the spirits within are so riled up that I can't enter the tomb to return it. Here, take it. I'd never want to see it again. You got your mom yelling at you? Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. <whistles> Holy son, Batman. Jeez. <laughs> and then it's lost behind the fog. We went from soul-searing power of Mordor to no sun at all. 
This appears to be the location about which Nandir wrote. The writing is so evocative, you can almost imagine the horrors that here transpired. The Witch King of Engmar. His fingers are trigger happy. Look out. <laughs> He's got some. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you gotta watch out for those trigger happy fingers. Oh my gosh, that just... After Hrudauer's most recent defeat, the armies of the Witch King required time to recover. And rebuild. During that time, their evil master turned to sorcery to bedevil his enemies. In secret, he came to the Barrows and walked among them whispering to the dead. Unknown to those living nearby, long buried lords and kings stirred from in the tombs, infested with fell spirits out of Angmar's darkest pits. <coughs> At the Witch King's bidding, they emerged. Legions of the dead moving silently through the fog Praying on any who strayed too near. Amon, dear. Well, hello, sir. The plague of the dead worsened, and even the children of Cardolan were not safe from it. Countless children were stolen from their beds or vanished within otherwise sturdy and unyielding walls. Desperate to put an end to this nightmare, Prince Amondir set forth on a quest to find the cause of the dead's unrest. He was the Lord of Tyrn Gorthad, after all, the Keeper of the Barrows. What he had to fear from the mist that settled upon the buried mounds? Was it not his people who were buried there? Were they not his own ancestors? His own kind? His own subjects? If he could not ease their burden and restore their restful peace, who could? Even as I write this, I find myself hoping beyond hope that the Lord of Tyrn Gorthad could put an end to it. But this has been my lifelong study, and I know how this tale ends. And it does not end with Amandir, for all his courage and his duty. Oh, he moving. Prince Amandir disappeared among the barrels. He was never seen again. It is hard to listen to the words of my friend Nandir and know he will write no more. I will keep this journal in memory of him, and I would do so even if we had no need of the knowledge contained within. You hand the journal to Meneldir, and he flips through its pages. Was never seen again, he reads, and turns the page. He looks up at you, puzzled. What happened to the rest of Nandir's account? There are several pages missing here. Even if that is the end of Amandir's story, there must have surely been more for Nandir to write. See, the account resumes here, beyond the missing pages. But what was removed? And who removed it? And more importantly, is Standing Stone Game now creating a new story to add back in? I think you should return to Ceylon to speak with Hondurat. 
to the missing pages, Nandia writes of Dol Ernu, the keep from which Prince Amandia ruled. I will go ahead and see what I can learn from there, but I think, I think you should return to Sirlon to speak with Andaron. He knew the location where Nandir kept his journal. Perhaps he will know why some of the pages were removed. If you solve that mystery, I will meet up with you again outside Dol Ernil. The last days of Cardolan. Here we go, Chad. Also, we gotta return a stolen necklace. Here we go. Bum, 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 bum. Just when you think you're done with all the side quests, another emerges. More powerful and terrible than the last. Here? No? Where? If I were to return a necklace, where would I do it? It's literally like right here. Or right here. You feel a lessening dread as you gently place the necklace. Okay. Thank goodness our bread is lessened. You're back. Excellent. I do not hear the excessive me moaning and groaning that was coming from the tombs. So it seems that you were successful. Thank you for putting the spirits back to rest. I hope that my grandson has learned his lesson. And yet somehow we get a necklace. Oh, uh, we said that we put it down, but in secret chat, we totes my goats took it for ourselves. The dark story of Lotro. <laughs> what really happened? Uh, a curse not let. A curse not lifted? Wait, <laughs> did we really steal the necklace? <laughs> the world may never know. <coughs> All right, so now we got to make our way all the way. You know what? We got we got mithril coins to spend. Oh, it takes five. Man, I hate that stuff. I wonder how much money Lotro makes from Mithril Coins. It's gotta be a lot. Cause I know there's people with alts, they're like altaholics. And they just spend a ton of Mithril Coins. Gotta be way up there.
<laughs> it looks like the road turned on us. I really don't understand why they haven't updated Mount Health yet. Like, the fact that even war steeds are getting one-shotted unless you turn on the, like, defensive shield thing. Kinda crazy. Crap, they got fire! Here goes nothing. That was definitely the correct way down. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, chat. Taking the fast for lane. <laughs> He's gotta run down all the stairs, the poor guy. Yeah, that's right, you better run. He's like, wait, he doesn't even have a broken leg? What is this thief? I fight gravity and I win. <laughs> A true brawler of Middle Earth. Here we go, back at Seerland. Missing pages? Cannot say I know anything about that. <laughs> but I do not think Nandir would have torn pages from his own journal. Someone else must have removed them, although I cannot guess why such a one would return the journal to its hiding place. Enderod rubs the side of his face, thinking deeply. There was one day that I spoke with Nandir and marked that he acted quite strangely, however. I encountered him on the Greenway, not far from the lone square ruin that stands beside the road to the northwest of Hearn. Now that I think on it, his manner was quite peculiar, and it seemed he was not his usual self. What did he say? He said something strange to me, but I cannot remember. If he did remove pages from his journal, which was not like him at all. That is the only day on which I would believe it. I wish I could remember what he said, but perhaps it will come to me with time. You should search that square ruin beside the road in Ruddymore. Maybe you will find something to shed light upon its mystery. Oh my gosh. This game is just sending us everywhere. It's so ridiculous. You know, it's faster if we go to Hearn. Then go up from there. It's a little bit faster. Little bit faster. Lighting is so good. Like, Lotro still has some of the best skies in any game.
Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. What are we supposed to be looking for? Oh! A small box rests here, but its lock is broken. And it's surrounded by orc footprints! And wolves! The wooden box is empty, already ransacked of its contents by orcs. Half orcs, or goblins. Dang. So now we gotta kill orcs, half orcs, or goblins? Yep. Of course we do. Wouldn't be Lotro without killing orcs, half orcs, or goblins. Perwethian! How's it going? Nerdy hubbins. <laughs> oh, that's the cutest thing anybody's ever called me. Just dragged your corpse from bed? Holy crap! Just got a Lady of the Lake picture going. Like, Queen from when she plays Among Us just came into my mind. That creepy clown voice of hers. The murder clown. Just make sure that when you kill the half orcs, you are killing the right half. <laughs> yes. Holy! There's an eagle here. Falcon punch. Alright, um... We're nearly to the half-orc, orc, or goblin perimeter. Here we go. Hey, we already collected a page! This must be easy. Or not. We might have just gotten really lucky, I don't know. But we've got one at least. That's one more than we had. Maybe one more than we deserve. Oh, hello. There's two. So far, we're having success with goblins, not half-orcs. Let's see if we can change that. Ah! Hey, there we go. Three complete. Where's our boot throwing? What is it? I don't know what that did. Or that, for that matter. More pain. Hey, there we go. That's that's the one. Bye.
Nothing. So far when we've started by throwing, it's not been successful. And when we just punch them, we get it. We gotta punch the pages out of them. But yeah, earlier in the stream we found out that all these red flowers are just the blood of, like, dead soldiers that have been, uh, harvested by the flowers into true beauty. Hey, there we go. Well, that's some more, I guess. Yeah, apparently that's actual, like, official lore. Not even Lotro made up. But yeah, much like the smaller area of the Red Swamp, but this is... This was a huge battle between Arthodyne and Cardolan. After the fall of Arnor. And supposedly the hills had, like, blood rivers. Like, it was really bad. Not dead baby ants. <laughs> oh no. I won't tell Tree Beard. I think if I go to Hearn, I should be able to fast travel there. So we're just gonna go straight south. I wish our milestone... See, I wish when you bought the, like, decreased milestone cooldowns, it would be account-wide. I don't know why that's not an account-wide thing. I shouldn't have to buy it on every single character I make. Maybe because Hunter teleports? Well, yeah, Hunter's got this, no problem. Like... But every character other than Hunter... And the Guardian Acorn Mail Service. And I guess Wardens have some too. But other than those three classes... Being reduced cooldown on the teleport might be pretty OP. For sure, for sure. But I feel like hunters are already OP so much that it really doesn't matter. Shabanov, what's up? Ninth Pawn, welcome, welcome. Nice to have all of you here today. Hopefully you're all doing well. We're just going through the main storyline as we're trying to wrap up the last days of Cardolan here on Before the Shadow. But like, I would, I would love for somebody to do a previous timeline Lord of the Rings that's actually lore appropriate unlike Amazon's nonsense. Like, I think it would be so good. It's a pretty neat story. It's pretty cool, I just wish there was a little less travel. How can I be of service? Uh, let's see, where is this? Sherlock 
farm. <laughs> Here we go. Taking the torn pages and the journal there to hopefully learn answers. Oh yeah, 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 the Lotra story. Table at the farm. Okay, there's more than one table. <laughs> Apparently, it's not the table, because this is the table right here. If I had a mind, maybe the workbench? Nope, <laughs> that's an actual workbench. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Amazon, Lorshmore, we know way better than the stuffy British dude. Tolkien, or whatever his name was. There's only one table where you can sort stuff, it's right. It's the right finish and all. Oh, man, let's see here. My hand shakes to record this, and I confess, trepid trepidation should I write this account at all but that is the duty of an archivist is it not to record to remember no matter the cost accounts of Prince Am Amondia's disappearance are few and scattered but those that remain chill my blood it is said his cries of terror echoed among the downs for three nights after he disappeared. And when they at last gave way to silence, the fog rolled in from the barrows deeper than ever. The sons of Amundir had, when he died, three sons Amundir had when he died, and the curse that came to fall upon them could not be escaped. One of the dead, a pale shade who appears as a man shaped in darkness, its eyes glowing a cold, blank white, appeared several decades after Amondir's disappearance. It seemed intent on hunting them, stalking and slaying them one by one. First, on Aranthadal, Aranthathal. That's like a medical word for alcohol. Goodness. <laughs> Eldest son of Arondir was found slain, but that was not the worst. Someone had garbed him in white, and he lay before a barrow gate in the downs after becoming separated from his companions in the evening. His face was shriveled, as though he had aged one hundred years in a single night. Scarcely two years later, his brother Thanadan met an identical fate, though in his case he disappeared from Dol Ernil itself. Hydrate, thank you. The Amazon series is good to watch. It's not like they did anything too egregious, like omitting Tom Bombadil or anything. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I personally totally understand why they omitted Tom Bombadil, because 
I feel like that would have really changed the flow of that movie. And it's already a three plus hour movie if you include the extended version, a four hour movie. Like, I think uh, it's a good thing they admitted Tom Bombadil, to be honest with you. Men whispered that it was a gray fear that haunted the children of Cardolan. Oh crap! Coming in with 500 biddies! I, I, oof! I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name, but thank you so much for the biddies taking the number one spot! Thank you, thank you. Let's get some hype in the chat. Really appreciate the support. And if even son, the sons of vanished Prince Amandir were not protected from it, who could claim safety for any? I hesitate to write Dole Ernil's curse, to write of the grey fear, but it is my duty. As I have sworn to the Dunedain, and I have sworn to uphold the truth, and I write it here in this journal. Hey, Miss Weaver, what's up? What's up? Over the holidays, you did a marathon viewing of the three Lord of the Rings movies. It was the extended editions, and it took forever. <laughs> yep. Yeah, at least 12 hours. So it's, it's a time commitment. Modding three streams while playing Final Fantasy XIV. Well, I know one of the other ones. But who's the third? The tip Shove jar, enough. my favorite pleasure device. But only if both Ondong and L-O-T-R-O are involved. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much for the tip. Crimson Duck too? Wow, Mist Weaver. You're busy. Um... Let's see. It's faster if we just go to there. Let's do that. What can I do for you? Andrath, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! You get huffy when you have to mod while watching another stream. Hats off to you. Here we go. On the edge of madness. Aren't we all, Miss Weaver? I think we've proven that I am. You're only pretending to mod as you keep going AFK. Be a way up there somehow. We need to go there. I think there is a way up through here, if I remember. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. The pawn sword is still a sword, even if it's made from NERF! <laughs> oh, jeez. I need to get back up. Alright, this is the time, chap. There we go. That's how you do it. Far 
already been here before. So none of this is scary anymore. But they are getting way better with like their fog and mist tech. I guess we need to go around this thing. Oh, hello. How y'all doing? It's still good for bonking. Oh, crap. Stinking bright priest. And by bright, I mean blight. There you are, my friend. I have been speaking with Gorwen, a ranger who keeps watch of a dull Aerlio. And we are both very interested to hear if you have learned anything more from Nandir's journal. She did not know him when he lived, so I have been telling her stories of our childhoods. It is... It is good to remember, I have to admit. But what have you learned? You hand Menaldir the journal and at your dis direction. He reads several of the pages. There it is again. The Grey Fear. There is more to learn of this foe, I know it. But listen to this. The battle plan of Angmar was threefold. But Prince Austere learned too late that more than just Amon Sul was endangered. He rode north to the defense of Weathertop with most of his household. And only when the southern sky filled with smoke from a great burning did he realize that Cardolan had been ravaged while he was away. He fought the Battle of Weathertop, though through his through eyes bleary, bleary with tears. And only when it was done did, the, did his king give him permission to return. He galloped with utmost haste back to Dol Ernil, but he was unprepared for the sight that awaited him in the throne room. These pages speak of the throne room of Dol Ernil. That is where you should read the rest of this account. Gorwin tells me the throne room is north of here, and up several flights of stairs. Please don't bonk me or I will bonk back. Oh my gosh. Get a room, you two. Oh crap. There we go, there we go. There we go. To the throne room. But it's Perwethian, so who knows? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I thought it was going to be a cinematic time, but it wasn't. All right. This appears to be the location about which Nandir wrote. The Stone Seat. Here at Care Paravel. You've discovered the Stone Seat. Well, you 
you know, it, it, it's close enough. Out of respect, we're not sitting in the actual seat, you know? <laughs> we're too short to climb in. The writing is so evocative, you could almost imagine the terrible sight that awaited Prince. Austere. The gray fear is him? Oh, crap. Um, buddy? I think I found your problem. You got... <laughs> Dude's got a spear through him. Holy crap! I think... I think I found your problem. <laughs> Don't even need to see a doctor for that one. You already know. Neil. Prince Austin's keep. I'm not a, a doctor, shell. but pretty sure that's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> pretty chill face for such a stab wound. By the time he finally reached Dol Ernil. Namdi writes, Prince Austere kept keep was a ruined shell. Its people lay heaped and bloody in the streets. The heads of its defenders mounted on stakes above its gates. See, this, this kind of stuff is the type of stuff that really needs to be in a Lord of the Rings game. Like, let's get like a hardcore, super dark Lord of the Rings game like that. Really show the evil of, of Middle-earth. And then the light shines that much brighter. Of his mother Lyloth, there was no sign at all. And in the shattered hall, seats upon Ostia's throne, was the Grey Fear. I hesitate to write what I have learned, but I must, I must. My duty compels me to write it, to write the truth. But can it be right to put into words such horror, such shame as this? It wars within me. Prince Austere stood in the ch in the carnal house that was Dol Ernil, and he looked in the eyes of the creature that sat upon the throne, and he knew the identity of the Grey Fear. It was Prince Amondir who sat there, Austere's own grandfather. But the servant of evil that stared back was a stranger entire. With a horrible smile upon its mocking visage, the apparition raised its hand, pointing at Amondir's terrified grandson. And the dead rose. I like how the game's like, in case you didn't notice, the huge spear threw the dude. We just wanted to point out that this is not a glitch, because you know Lotro has glitches, sometimes spears just go through people. But we wanted to point out that this one's not the glitch, this is the real... <laughs> oh boy. The Whites had simply been waiting for their master's command. Nandir writes. Now they emerged from among the slain, including some freshly killed in the recent battle. And they fell upon Austere and his knights. Panicking, the prince fled the burning stronghold, escaping into the Barrow Downs. But he might as well have tried escaping a smith's hammer by fleeing to his anvil. The Engmiram were waiting there in ambush for him, 
and among their number were hill folk, orcs, and cultists of the Witch King. The dead drove Ostia's dwindling companies straight toward this enemy force. And there in the darkness, caught between the living and the dead, every last one of Cardolan's defenders died. Prince Ostia perished last of all, sobbing with despair as one of Khan Doom's warriors drove a spear of cold iron through his heart. His bones and those of his company vanished among the downs. I have written it. Is that what you wanted of me? I have finished it. My duty is fulfilled. But the account is too terrible. I will tear these pages from my journal, and I will hide them. Yes, let none know how badly the men of Cardolan failed. I will bury the Witch King's victory as deep as deep allows, and so triumph over Angmar myself. The Grey Fear has not been seen in hundreds of years, and I will not give the creature life by letting this account be read by anyone. If there is any need for these pages in the days to come, I will retrieve them myself. But I can see no such day ahead of us. That is a blessing. Dang. Wow, and super good thumbnail. Let's get it. There we go. All right. That was some good writing. Absolutely. It was really good. Oh, crap. Hey, buddy. Take our ATH, our all-terrain horse. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this way. Okay. That was not nice at all. Nandia was at San Ford when the Black Riders attacked. And he fled. As the others of the Dunedain did, we found his body not far from the Greenway, and I thought perhaps he may be... he made for the gathering places of his kin. But what if it was not so? What if he made instead for the lone square ruin that stands further south beside the Greenway? I wonder... I think he saw the return of the wraiths and believed the Grey Fear was once again haunt of it, its lands of old. Cardolan, that was. I think he was running to retrieve the torn pages of his journal, Brohara, so the Dunedain would know the terror that might be up against. He wanted to arm them with the knowledge of what they might face. But he was struck down by the Black Riders. By the Nazgul. Before he could reach the place where he hid the true account. I think Nandir knew the peril and died trying to warn us of it. The Lord of the Nazgul plans to raise the Grey Fear from its slumber, endangering all of the North. But first, you gotta pick some pants. <laughs> well, they all look mighty fine, but I think I'll take the top pants. 
I see the hand of the Witch King all about us. I will tell Gorwin what we have learned of our foes. But she has kept watch on Dol Ernil no for longer than we have. I suggest that you ask her what needs doing in the keep, and in blighted Tern Gorthad. I see the hand of the Witch King all about us, and it must be opposed if we are able to oppose it. Death on the Barrow Downs, holy crap. That sounds scary. When we return, well, let's go ahead and read her stuff and then we'll return when uh, we find out where we need to go. How about that? I'm younger than Manel, dear, by Let me go uh, shut off an alarm real quick. It was written in the ancient Catalan scriptures. That on this day, more than 700 years before, while on the cusp of defeat from the Angmirum, you must wear pants! <laughs> this is why we gave them on swords and not spears. It's all fun in games till someone gets ishkabobbed. <laughs> They also labeled it an Angmirum Sphere, so you don't get confused for other spheres. <laughs> I am younger than Minodia by some years. Though we both grew up in the angle of Mithaethel, I did not meet him before he left us. His name was always spoken in whispers. A warning to the children that not everyone should take the oath. That not everyone should swear to the life of the Dunedain. Minaldir sighs heavily, and Gorwin raises a gloved hand. I did not mean to injure your feelings, Minaldir. What I mean is this. I expected a monster. When you came to my camp, I thought you were must be fleeing from hardship. Escaping from some trouble of your own making. Such were the tales we were told in childhood. But I find instead you are a man, not a monster. And you fight on behalf of those who cannot. Willing even to return to your former kin. To bring them warning. Though they sting you with barbs and biting tongues. I see honor in that. But there are monsters out there, Brawlhalla. Real monsters. I do not need to hear the full account of Minodia's fallen friend to know that. For I knew it already. If not its true extent or depth, White stock ten Gorthand, and there are other dangers, dangerous threats as well. Spying craven, pestling crawlers, and the gaunt men who prowl among the barrows. Each troubles the Dunedain, and the allies in this land. There are swords both within the keep and without that exclude fighting auras of evil. And they must be collected and destroyed despite the presence of their terrible protectors. Can all this be done? Can all this be done? Can all this be done? Yes. Um, anyway. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's stream. If you did, be sure to follow if you haven't already. A big thanks to all the support today with the biddies and the tippies. I don't know if tippies is a thing, but man, we're making it one. <laughs> uh, but seriously, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Even just you guys hanging out means a lot.
Um, it's always a much better stream when there's people in chat talking back to you. Uh, that's pretty much the whole reason I do this is for the interaction, to be honest with you guys. It's nowhere near as fun to play games all by yourself. Streaming them together is what makes them fun. La you boo. <laughs> oh my goodness. Interact we shall. <laughs> so anyway, um I believe Mistweaver would like it if we decreased his modding responsibilities from three to two. So I think I know who we're going to raid today. At first, Perwethian, I thought you said I do like enjoying you, and I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> but no, I do like annoying you. That makes much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the things I admit on stream. Anyway, um... Let's go ahead and raid Eluren. <laughs> sir? 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 <laughs> have a good day, y'all. And all of you have a good day. Let's get those emotes ready, get that hype going, especially the sheep emotes. We know Allura will appreciate it, even though I won't. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and have fun with this raid. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again on Monday for a big stream as we hopefully finish up this story here in Lotro. But till then, take care and have a great rest of your day. Peace!